So, hello everyone again and welcome to my channel. In here we'll be looking at particle physics and most especially we'll be looking at particles related to atoms and how you know, for example, that electrons, protons and neutrons all consist of an atom. But don't worry, there are still more subparticles that makes up all these general particles that are familiar to you. And most especially now looking at particles. Now particles can be divided into two forms. We can have that of the light particles which is in terms of quantity wise and on the other side we can have that of the medium to how large all these particles they are and interestingly enough when you're diving into this light versus medium to large how they are well the light ones are mainly known as leptons and leptons are pretty much one of the most light particles known because they just have one particle. There's nothing like, oh, we have two or three things that consist of what Neptunes are, but they are just one particle. And these particles are known to be the fundamental particles. Now, example of these Neptunes is in terms of how stable they are. Now, example include the stable forms, which are actually the electrons, and the electron will have its outer particle form, which is called, in this particular Neptune state, to be the neutrino electron over here on the other side we have that of the tau which is either the tau negative or the tau neutrino over here now the unstable one of lepton is called the muon and the muon consists of two forms we can have the muon positive here we have the muon negative over there and muons are known to be the unstable form of lepton and muons can decay because of its instability and they need to be stable they decay and they decay to form three types of particles or I would say fundamental particles in this case we can have the electron form over here when it decays also to form neutrino and other side can decay to form an anti neutrino over here and this is one of the main particles that actually consists of a lepton and all these particles are just the fundamental particles as I said previously and once they are fundamental in this case it means that they can't actually form anymore or they can't decay any form or they don't consist of other things involved in them now these fundamental particles are known also to obey the Pauli exclusion principle and uh, once you obey the Pauli exclusion principle, then it means that you're categorized as particles that are actually fermions. And once you're fermions, then it means that you have an integral spin of a half, in this case over here. So once you have a half spin, then you're considered to be a fermion. Uh, fermions, they mostly obey the Pauli exclusion principle and another principle that we'll talk about later. Now, going into the next part, which is called the hadrons. The hadrons are generalized as going in the medium to the large scale. Um, hadrons are actually particles that consist of quakes. And quakes are not actually in terms of Neptunes. We don't put quakes in the category of Neptunes because Neptunes are fundamental particles. They don't require quakes or interaction of quakes to form Neptunes. However, in terms of hadrons, they consist of quakes and antiquakes. Some of them contain antiquakes, some of them consist of quakes, and this interaction makes them to actually generate a form of interactions. And these interactions could either be strong or weak interactions that you're familiar with in nuclear physics. And most especially looking at quakes over here, quakes can either be categorized as either the up a down state we can have the charmed or we can have the strangeness and other side we can have the top and bottom and in each quakes over here we have our anti quakes and this anti quakes means that you have the opposite of what you have over here like for example, for example we have up but this time you have an up bar versus the down bar we have the strange bar versus that of the charmed bar on the other side we can, sorry charmed bar versus the strange bar on the other side we have our top bar over our bottom bar over here now, moving further in terms of these quakes and antiquakes, we know that hadrons are mainly divided into two parts as we said previously. In here we have a medium part in terms of how medium its size is versus that of our large size is. 
Now let's go from large to medium to light. Large are looking at three interactions within this particular large part where you have three quakes interact with each other. Take note I said quakes and this is anti quakes. So on the other side of here we have medium where we have one quake and we have one anti quake interacting with each other to form the medium state. And on the last side we have Neptune which is just one fundamental particle. So take note that we go from three to two to one. And now going past this, looking at the medium part, the medium are known to be called meson. Uh, mesons are known to be the medium particles and most medium parts they consist of one quake and one anti-quake over here. And once you have these interactions with respect to each other, then you can assume that all mesons are known to be bosons. And why do I say that? Why well, I say that? Because bosons are the opposite of fermions and a fermion which is half spin state. However, the bosons doesn't have a half spin state, they just have an integral spin. And integral spin shows that in this most boson case, they don't obey how is it cancel? The Pauli excretion principle. And once you don't obey the Pauli excretion principle, then it means that you're somehow kind of familiar with that of a photon and a photon which is known to have no antiparticle and is known to be pretty much an energy form which are packets of energy in this case and you know that all this packet of energy shows how light can be a particle so hey you can say that light can actually be a meson despite the fact that you can actually say that oh two particles consist of a photon no it's kind of interesting to think about that, but interesting enough, as that sounds, we also categorize photon to be that of not obeying the Pauli exclusion principle. And now, examples of mesons consist of the following. We have pions. Pions is actually having either the up or it has, it has the up and the down bar interacting with respect to each other. On the other side, we have error, which has two particles as well, which I want you guys to go check it out yourself. And on the other side, we have Charon, which has two forms of quakes, which is the up quake, which is the bar, and the strange quake. And that is about it for Charon's. And let's just focus more on the peons over here. Peons, which known to be either the bar positive or bar negative or the bar neutral. It's interesting enough because peons can decay as well, which is kind of an unstable form of a meson. And once they decay, they could either form two particles, which are either the muon, which we talked about previously, which is over here, and these muons actually further decay to form other particles over here. And on the other side, we go we have an anti neutrino over here so this is one of the key things that you need to know in terms of meson and on the other side looking at the large part the large part if you look at the large particles which involves three quakes interacting with each other we know that quake, large quakes are known to be boson so these large particles are known to be bosons and these large particles involve three quakes interacting with each other and these three quirks makes us to believe that they obey the fermion rule which which makes us to believe that if you're a fermion state then you have an integral spin of a half in this case over here and also you actually obey the Pauli exclusion principle and outside this is supposed to be a P over there. Pauli well, exclusion principle and on the other side you also obey the dark principle over here or dark print, uh, statistics which shows that in early electron movement an electron will always generates a hole which consists of a positron so an electron will also have an antiparticle and that is how it is with respect to other particles that are actually neptunes over here and once you move from one point to another you always always form an antiparticle state that is what the dark concept brings up uh, for example, of all these particles that are bears include protons, and we have that of 
neutrons and these ones are all familiar to you all and now looking at protons protons consists of three quakes and these three quakes include the up up and down state and protons you know could be either proton here and proton bar over there on the other side you have neutrons which are also three quakes interacting with respect to each other which are the down down and up which all consists of either the mu or the that bar over there neutron bar over there and other forms of particles involved in bands includes the following we have psi which is either psi or the psi bar over there on the other side we have sigma sigma could either be sigma positive or sigma bar over there and lastly we can have our delta which also has three quakes over there consists of either the delta positive or delta negative or bar over there and all these are, are the characteristics and also the various types of bosons we have and our bosons is differentiated from mesons in terms of how medium to how large they are and how hydrons over here is differentiated from lepton in terms of how medium to large they are versus how light they are over there now thanks again for following me through this i appreciate it big time i love you guys to so go check out more of my videos and hit the like button share and subscribe if you understand this key concept involved in nuclear physics and i hope to see you all on my next video have a good day peace love you bye